Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel. Today's topic of discussion is multiple push button stations. Our objective is to take a brief look at multiple push button stations as applied to electrically controlled systems. We'll discuss the placement of devices inside ladder logic diagrams used to stop and start the process. This lecture operates under the assumption you've watched the basic ladder logic and two and three wire control circuits lectures available at the Big Bad Tech channel. If you haven't watched these lectures yet, or only dimly recall their contents, please take the time to do so now. Control circuits are divided into two general categories, two and three wire control circuits. Two wire circuits are ordinarily characterized by automatic switches, like temperature, float, or pressure switches, and are suited for applications in which the automatic movement of a fluid power actuator or an electric motor would not present a safety hazard. Three-wire circuits, in contrast, are ordinarily characterized by momentary manual switches like push buttons and a holding circuit. A three-wire control circuit is suitable for applications where the unexpected movement of a fluid power actuator or an electric motor would present a safety hazard. It is sometimes desirable to control a process using a three-wire control circuit from multiple locations, necessitating the use of multiple push button stations, where a push button station is the physical grouping of those buttons that stop and start the process. Ideally, all the push button stations should perform the same function, the only difference being their different locations. The methodology is surprisingly simple. Devices that stop the process go in series with each other, and devices that start the process go in parallel with each other. Consider this three-wire control circuit controlled by a single push button station consisting of a maintained e-stop, a momentary retract, and a momentary extend push button. This illustrates the logic behind an operator-initiated extension and retraction of a hydraulically extended, spring-retracted, single-acting cylinder. The ladder logic diagram of this circuit is a repeat of the holding circuit we introduced in the basic ladder logic lecture. Let's review how it functions since an understanding of its function is critical to our current topic. If an operator were to press the extend button, the momentary normally open extend switch would close, and via the normally closed e-stop, the normally closed retract, and the now closed extend, the coil of control relay one would be energized. When the coil of control relay one is energized, its associated contacts would change states. The normally open CR1A contact in parallel with the extend push button would close, and the normally open CR1B contact in rung 3 would close. The now closed CR1B contact energizes the A solenoid of DCV1. The energized solenoid A would shift directional control valve 1 to the straight through position and the single acting cylinder would extend. Note that all it took to initiate extension of this cylinder is energizing the coil of CR1 by providing a path for current. We'll come back to this later. If an operator were to release the momentary contact extend button, the spring return would return it to its normally open deactivated state. Note that the now closed CR1A holding contact would maintain the energized state of the CR1 coil. This means that the CR1B contact would stay closed and the A solenoid of DCV1 would remain shifted to the straight through position and the cylinder would continue to extend. That's the point of the holding circuit. It maintains the last asserted state. The cylinder would extend until the limits of travel and the pressure relief valve would open. To retract the cylinder, an operator must press the normally closed retract button. The now open retract would de-energize CR1 coil and the associated contacts would return to their de-energized state. The CR1A holding contact would open and remove the path in parallel to the extend push button. The CR1B contact would open which would de-energize the A solenoid of DCV1. The spring offset DCV1 would shift to the cross-connect position and the spring retracted single acting cylinder would retract. Note that all it took to initiate retraction of this cylinder is by de-energizing the coil of CR1 and breaking a path for current. We'll come back to this point in a moment. Notice that while in its natural deactivated closed state, the maintain contact e-stop in no way, shape, or form affects functionality of the system. When an operator presses and releases extend, the cylinder would extend completely to the limits of travel and remain extended. 
When an operator presses and releases retract, the cylinder would retract, ready to initiate another extend and retract cycle. If, however, an operator were to observe an unsafe scenario, by hitting the maintained e-stop, the cylinder would retract and the system would be disabled. Importantly, due to the maintained rather than momentary nature of the e-stop, the system will remain disabled until the e-stop is reset. The extend button will not energize the coil of CR1 and as such, DCV1 sole A will not energize despite repeated attempts to do so. That's the point. The maintained e-stop has disabled the system. Only after the e-stop has been reset and returned to the closed position can the system now extend the cylinder. Again, note all it took to initiate retraction of this cylinder and disabling the system is by de-energizing the coil of CR1 and breaking a path for current. Now, let us consider a scenario in which this single push button station is in room A and the hydraulic system is in room B. If a technician servicing the hydraulic system in room B were in a dangerous scenario that couldn't reach the e-stop in room A and could run the risk of being injured with no way of stopping it. Recall from our review of this three-wire control circuit as presently implemented, all it took to initiate retraction of this cylinder and disabling the system is by de-energizing the coil of CR1 and breaking the path for current. It would be a very simple matter to include another e-stop. I'll call it e-stop B, electrically in series with e-stop A, yet physically located in room B to perform the same function. If a technician servicing the hydraulic system in room B observed an unsafe scenario, they could hit e-stop B, and quite like e-stop A, would initiate retraction of this cylinder and disable the system by de-energizing the coil of CR1 and breaking the path for current. Either e-stop button, because of its maintained nature, rather than momentary, retracts the cylinder and disables the system as intended. This is a safety chain circuit in that both e-stop A and e-stop B must be closed for the system to return to service. Only when both e-stops are reset in their closed position can the cylinder be extended. Additional functionality can be added to the room B push button station that mimics the function of the room A push button station. Consider the inclusion of retract B electrically in series with retract A. When either retract button is pressed, it also de-energizes the coil of CR1 and breaks the path for current. Either retract button, because of its momentary nature rather than maintained, retracts a cylinder ready to initiate another extension. Consider the inclusion of Extend B, not in series, but rather electrically in parallel with Extend A. Recall that parallel connections of normally open switches serve as the logical OR operator, and that either Extend A or Extend B, or both of them together, would serve to energize the coil of CR1, thereby initiating extension. Extend B thus serves to extend the cylinder from the room B push button station. As I stated previously, when expanding the number of stations used to control the process, devices intended to stop the process go in series with one another. Any open in this series path would de-energize the coil of CR1. Conversely, push buttons intended to start the process go in parallel with one another. As long as the series path preceding the extend push buttons is closed, either extend push button would initiate extension. Consider troubleshooting scenarios in which any one of the e-stops or retracts developed an inadvertent open. The cylinder would never extend. Voltmeter checks at various points in the pilot circuit would show all voltage being dropped across the unintended open, counter to expectations. In the ready state, ordinarily all voltage would be dropped across the parallel combination of extend buttons and the holding contact. If e-stop B was open, all voltage would be dropped across the left terminal of e-stop B and the right terminal of any of those devices making the parallel combination. Note that elements between these two points are floating and in no way electrically connected to the circuit. Consider another troubleshooting scenario in which any one of the extends inadvertently sticks closed. The cylinder would always extend provided all the e-stops and retracts were closed. If the process necessitated its inclusion, a third push button station could be added to the system providing identical operation from yet another location, let's say location C. 
Note E stop C is in series with both E stop A and B. Either E stop will retract the cylinder and disable the system. Only when all E stops are reset would the system return to service. Note retract C is electrically in series with retract A and B. Either retract would retract the cylinder and return the system to the ready state. Note extend C is in parallel with extend A and extend B. Either extend button would initiate extension of the cylinder via the control relay and holding circuit. Importantly, because of the safety chain, only when all E stops are closed and all the retract buttons closed would the system do so. Note the incorporation of multiple push button stations is not limited to electrical controlled fluid power systems, but can also be expanded into motor control. Here's the ladder logic diagram for a motor controlled by two different push button stations. The ladder logic governing its function is immediately recognizable. E stop A and B are in series with stop A and B. If an operator pressed any one of these buttons, the M contactor coil would be de energized. The maintained E stops, however, would disable the system until they are reset, in contrast to the momentary stops, which would return the system to the ready state. If an operator pressed any of the starts, it would provide a path for current and energize the M contactor coil. The auxiliary contact M1 provides a holding contact in parallel to the start buttons, which maintains the last asserted state. Really, the only difference between this and our previously electrically controlled fluid power system is that the M contactor coil is being directly energized by the multiple push button stations rather than the control relay intermediary and the inclusion of a normally closed overload contact in series with the M contactor coil. The series nature of the overload contact illustrates its intended function. If the motor is not overheated, the normally closed nature of the overload contact allows the motor to run. If the motor is overheated, the overload contact opens and breaks the path for current, thereby de-energizing the M contactor coil and thereby turning off the motor. All right, this about wraps up this brief lecture on multiple push button stations. In conclusion, this lecture examined the incorporation of multiple push button stations used to control a process. We discussed the safety chain and the placement of devices intended to stop and start the process. Remember to review these concepts as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest, and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource, and be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.